why should everyone have to pay so much for those who live so close to the water and are causing a disproportionate share of the problem? So think about Brevard County as just a place, any place in the state of Florida. And you think about, you know, how people move into communities, what they do in communities, how they recreate, how they get jobs, how property values go. And think about what drives property values. It's the quality of community. And so for those folks who believe anywhere in the state of Florida that the ocean and coastal water quality does not affect them economically, their quality of lives, or their future potential to resell real estate, then they're not paying attention to what's going on in the state of Florida with water. And so tourism is driven. <laughs> tourism is driven by clean water. Real estate driven by clean water. I can tell you that the folks that I know, a lot of my friends who don't live right on the water, but live in Palm Bay, live in Vieira, you know, live in western Martin County or western Volusia County, almost all of them fish. All of them, for sure, go to the beach at some point or the other, especially when their families are coming down in the dead of winter from Wisconsin. And so this idea that somehow this is uniquely the responsibility and the, the value proposition of somebody who lives on a coastal area, I've got news for you. The entire state of Florida is a coastal area. There's not a single square foot of this state that is, isn't impacted by our, oastal, our coastal and ocean economy. So I'll throw a couple numbers. Back in 2013, the Florida Ocean Alliance actually looked at the state of Florida, said what does that coastal and nearshore ocean economy look like in total value? It was over $580 billion a year. In 2016, the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council, along with East Central Florida Regional Planning Council, with money from the Department of Economic Opportunity, asked a similar question about the Indian River Lagoon. $7.6 billion a year. And I actually served on the review committee, because I had been in industry, and they came back with a return on investment value in that uh, regional planning study, which, to be honest, I said, oh, this is wrong. I sent it back, and then I made phone calls. I said, I'm not getting this. Uh, but the actual estimate was 33 to 1. For every dollar invested in restoration, you saw a regional return of value, not cash value, a value of 33 to 1. And if you look at the Save Our Indian River Lagoon plan, a, another independent economic analysis done in an entirely different way. They use net present value. And Virginia, remind me if I get these numbers wrong. Uh, the total value was at around six billion, I understand. And the return on investment value was 20 to one. So we got a range. Worst case scenario, 21 to one to 33 to one. But what's remarkable to me is that we still think that somehow, you know, if you're living in Orlando, you're not a coastal city, and there's just simply a wrong perception based on the real economic drivers for this state.